Otherwise, they might run at a more important part of the game. Um, so yeah, Alimo League 2v2. It's always fun to have the Alimo League come in in different formats. These are best of fives, but all maps are played. So if I'm not mistaken, that means every map is worth money. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's about $68 one per map. So obviously within a five-game series, that's around the $340 mark available for each best of five slash five-game series. Obviously not quite a best of five, right? If it's just five maps played, but yeah, that is the general... Uh, generally just what we're looking at today. Now, we are in TV2 mode, so I'm going to have to do some magic with the logos quickly, and then we can go... Oh god, I just deleted the logo. Oh god, can I control... Oh god, I just deleted the logo I always use. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I guess we'll fix that in the future. You know what it is? I've just got so many logos in my lineup, right? I have to move the NordVPN up here, and then I just need to add the Alimo League logo, guys. Just give me one moment. And uh, we can go, go. Don't think anything crazy is happening to start with, at least. Where's Alimo League? There it is. Get the Alimo League logo up there. As, yeah, we get to do the Alimo League today. Always nice to have the Alimo League around and active and stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Let's see what goes on. It is, like I say, 2v2. So, uh, 2v2 time is... Uh, Oh, was a fun time. We've seen, honestly, a pretty good amount of 2v2s recently. I feel like over the past year, especially, there's just been a lot more 2v2. And obviously, a big part of that is probably the fact that we had the uh, Nation Wars event, and Nation Wars ran their pre-show with a 2v2. But we've also had the Alimali taking on new formats, and they've ran 2v2. So just a couple of different uh, tournaments that have switched into some 2v2 stuff every now and again has really meant that over the last, like I say, year or so, We've probably seen... I've probably casted more 2v2 in the last year than I casted in the rest of my StarCraft career altogether, right? So, definitely... Yeah, definitely something we're becoming more and more familiar with. Uh, definitely something that uh, we kind of like seeing. And, uh, yeah, it's been fun. And uh, I, I might even be getting to the point where I could even tell you a little bit about the matchups. <laughs> Now, obviously, you've got Australian Scholar playing their main races, Protoss and Zerg. Ryung and Maru are going to play Terran and Protoss, so Pro Protoss is going to be Maru. And uh, he's deciding to play Protoss, I assume, because double Terran is actually not too bad, but Terran Protoss is a lot stronger. The reason being, the Terran player can kind of feed the, star, uh, the Protoss player initially and feed into Phoenix. And once you feed the Phoenix opening, you can then, as the uh, Terran player, start playing Mech yourself. And the Protoss player can play Sky Toss, so you're play basically playing Sky Toss in the sky and Mech on the ground. Those are two of the strongest compositions in the game in two different aspects of the game, so they power up very nicely. So Terran Protoss is a very strong comp, that's why you'll see Maru playing some Protoss here. I'm not sure if Maru's going to play Protoss all day, or if he's just going to play Protoss for part of the day, or if they're going to swap. I have no clue at all, but honestly it's ter generally not a terrible idea to play a Terran Protoss composition here. It's probably better than playing Terran Terran, especially because we know that Maru is pretty good with his Protoss as well. So, uh... Yeah. As we start up, we will see Phoenix on both sides. Phoenix are just such powerful 2v2 units, because when you can feed into them, you can get an overwhelming amount quickly, and they can pretty much always just lift up and harass and just have huge amounts of options in the early stages of the game. So that's a, a pretty sizable factor in general. So that's definitely one thing to be watching out for, as we do have our feelings just making their way down to the bottom of the map, so just trying to get over here, see what's going on. I'm going to get rid of an SCV straight away. And just going to see the Ling starting to back it up a little bit and just go towards the ramp. The single Adept will come forward and just going to go and try and get rid of a couple of these Lings with the Ling speed. Well, obviously Scarlet felt like she could fight this Adept, but Maru's Adept is going to win out, so those Lings were not quite enough. And Scarlet is going to get turned around. Maru is going to be able to give chase. All links popping out, and again, this is very much so at the moment, just about Phoenix on Phoenix. A Terran player isn't completely feeding Maru in the sense of, you know, he is building combat shields, medevac, stim. So it's not a complete feed into Phoenix. Is that affecting you at all? Not really, because I don't think Scarlet's obviously completely feeding Estrella either. As, uh oh, this is one more Phoenix for Maru, and he gets the first pick off Estrella. Is on the run, and the Phoenix are going down, and this is disastrous. Oh my goodness. Australia just cannot get out of reach of the Phoenix of Maru there. And that is going to be, well, yeah, that's going to be painful. No, I mean, that's a lot lost as the Phoenix come in to get that Overlord. And, oh, God, this is really bad. Obviously, the battery helps, but now we're going to have Ryung uh, reinforcing this with a drop in the main base. If the Phoenix want to fight this, 
Well, the Phoenix of Maru are going to chase them away, and this could be a pretty swift ending to this game number one. That just kind of came out of nowhere, hitting down the pylons, getting rid of the Phoenix production on the other side, and Estrella and Scarlet will seemingly be in a lot of trouble here uh, at the end of this, as this is truly turned into worst-case scenario. Now we lost to Phoenix of Free here, as the Lings are trying to get it set up, but like I say, the damage is already realistically being done. We lift, we leave, the Phoenix still protecting. I mean, realistically, could unload on the low ground if you want to as well, so just going to do exactly that and keep up this pressure. And this really did just explode out of nowhere. No, I mean, just the Phoenix fight, I didn't think there was any reason the Phoenix fight would go that badly. I guess the Stray just being across the map was down a Phoenix reinforcing, and... Boom, that, that was all it was. And Maru, it wasn't just one Phoenix, like, he was in range the entire time as uh, Australia was trying to retreat. That was obviously very costly, and uh, these Marines now just continuing to clean up, doing a very good job of it. Back to the low ground, just dancing around, Ryong doing everything he can to make this as difficult as possible. And, yeah, uh, I mean, this is just the two drops in the, the Phoenix. We're not even considering what's been building up back at home during this. Australia is heavily hamstringed in this game now. His entire main mineral line was not mining this entire time. He's not been having his production structures online this entire time. These are all issues which, like I say, he probably has to deal with here. Marsbar, thank you so much for the 32-month resub. Welcome back. Wonder if Mara could ruin a DreamHack America with his Protoss? No, I think uh, Neeb, Australia, Scarlet uh, would, would be okay against this Protoss. Like, I, I don't I don't doubt Mara could like take a map or so here and there. Or have a good run, but I don't think he'd be able to take down Australia, Neve, Scarlet, and like best of fives, best of sevens in the playoffs. I think that's probably the the upper limit, you know. Especially some of those matchups as well. Is like none of them are like PVT, and usually when you play off race, one of the best things you have is the knowledge of your own race when you're playing the reverse matchup, right? So if he if it was like the top players in NA with Terrence, I would actually maybe say yes. Because his PVT is likely to be his absolute best matchup, just because, again, he has the knowledge from the Terran point of view, right? So, that goes a long way. As these Marines are going to continue to sit here, a lot of probes continue to go down, Widowmine's going off. Phoenix will uh, lift up a handful of Valens, and, well, yeah, I mean, this has just been a dominant affair. This one's definitely not going the other way anytime soon. This is GG's from Australia and Scarlet, and Ryung and Maru will be the first to pick up some cash today as they win their first map of the Elite League. As we take it into our second map here. And it says best of five on the bottom. It's just five games played. We play all five games no matter what. I just want to reiterate that a lot. Otherwise, people will probably come in asking me in like an hour. and be like, hey. And so if I say it a lot now, then you guys can maybe help answer the new people when they come in asking the questions. As you have in the top left-hand side, it is Ryong. He's obviously teamed up with Maru, who's just across from him. In the bottom right, Scarlet and Estrella. This map is great for being aggressive and cheesing and proxying. The reason being is that this is obviously a... Uh, first, you can proxy here and essentially create a wall off. So you can escape to the other side with reinforcements if you need to. And secondly, because both these bases of each player are separate. So you can really hone in on a single player and try and take that single player down. This proxy location has been used a lot no surprise to see Scarlet playing a gas pool opening here and setting up with that on these early stages. There's the wall off, like I mentioned as well. That's something we have seen a lot. This is one of the things where Castle Nation Wars helped me a lot because I would have had no clue about that if uh, I hadn't uh, seen it in Nation Wars. And it was actually used a pretty reasonable amount in Nation Wars as well, I think, is the, is the crazy thing. Seen our setup then getting going. Of course, this probe scout from Maru tells him everything he needs to know. No, you know, ba you know no structures in base from Estrella. He'll see the very late expansion of Scarlet. Immediately, Maru drops down the defensive forge, and we'll be looking to utilize that over these next few moments. And get that forge into play and to go from there. So, that's going to be our starting point in that regard. Yeah, we'll get this uh, ready to begin in just a few moments with our attacks. Obviously, the first couple of Zelds are ready to come up this ramp and get ready to fight. So, 
in we go. Students start swiping away at the gateway here. Just going to try and take that down. Obviously, the cannon's on the way up. It's not ready yet. Once it's up, it will provide quite a lot of uh, support, I'm sure. And there is that cannon. So the gateway will not fall. Now do you maybe turn your attention to Ryung, or is this just completely held? Astraea is starting to expand, so it looks like they're going to start letting up the pressure a little bit here. And as the bunker on the top of this ramp is going to be enough to hold off, and not nothing really going to come out of that. So yeah, this is uh, a nice defense, obviously. The slowest expander of the game is going to be Maru's. Scarlet expander now, Astraea expands. But uh, you've got to remember that there's a lot of investment around the map for everybody else. And so it's perhaps okay that Maru is not expanding so quickly. He's going to build an Oracle, so he'll have more tech as well. And that's maybe something you can get into some bases and to deal some damage with. So, absolutely a possibility. Thing that's coming up, Hatchery coming down, the extra drones in production. And obviously Scarlet just needing a bailing nest at some point here, I'd imagine, to help support the units that Estrella is building into. As the Stalkers recalling home, by the way, because the Oracle is across the map, so... We get one probe, we will get a couple probes. How many kills has this Oracle got? Eight, actually, oh my goodness. I didn't realize it was quite that serious straight away. For some reason we don't have the, um... The game hard, the workers killed on the side on, that does usually come on for 2v2 still, so... Pretty sure we even had it in the last game, no? So maybe just a little bug there as a couple of zealots are getting cleaned out. The oracles back around to the left-hand side. And there's going to be C9 and Philip Reigniter coming up. It's going to be Ryung moving straight into mech play. Can't quite get rid of the pile on there, so those two gates will stay around. And Scarlet has a lot of lings coming across the map. I mean, they are behind. They might just commit to an all-in. Try to end this now rather than letting this game pan out. But, I mean, again, a tank siege is a lot of uh, Hellions. So the Stalkers really are going to have to help a lot against the Hellions, and then the Lings will have to try... I mean, it's just... There's so many things need to go right here. Plus, you've got the Oracle setting up Stasis Wards defensively. That ain't going to help. And this definitely feels as though we are going to be having ourselves a Ryung and Maru Game 2 going their way. Like I say, it is nice because this is five games guaranteed, so we know we're guaranteed to get these five maps no matter what. So it's not too, like, sad if someone starts running away with a 3-0, because obviously every game is still worth prize money, every game is still worth a little bit of cash. Let me see now, Oracle's coming through once again, obviously just utilizing these repeatedly across the map to keep on harassing, keep on dealing damage. Doing a good job of it so far as those oracles get pushed back away. And a couple of voids coming up on the side of Maru. The plus one air weapons as well, all coming into play right now. So all of this getting brought up and online. As you can see, obviously the mech force continuing to stack up. The good thing at least is the stalkers are pretty good against blue flame hellions. Blue flame hellions don't roast those at least, and... I gotta say, I'm kind of, I guess Scarlet was never really, like, was pretty quick to expand, so pretty quick to get back on her feet, and she does have a good drone count. It's Astray who's really struggling, right? He's the one that did commit a lot into this early. He's the one that took the damage to the Oracles as well. So, Astray is definitely struggling, but can Scarlet maybe make up for it? I think that's the problem. I don't think she can. And the only reason I say that is because I think Zerg is not the race that is the best at carrying the team on its back. If it was the other way around and Scarlet was lacking and Estrella was the kind of the bulkier player and maybe a little bit further ahead of the other team, then I would actually feel as though it was very doable. It's just Zerg armies just aren't really designed in such a way that they, like I say, they don't really carry, right? You know what I mean? So that, that's my biggest concern. Estrella's getting set further and further behind. And especially when you see what Scarlet's building. She's building links. She's maybe going to start building roaches soon. It feels like you're going to need so much more than that, right? But, like, you're going to need so much more tech to realistically be competitive against what is currently, you know, Void Ray production from Maori, full-on mech production from Ryong. Oh, this map's terrifying as well. I never actually really realized that, so... <laughs> Nicely pointed out, Observer. I, uh, 
got a little bit scared when we zoomed into that mass of whatever it was. What it looked like, like a Zerg tunneling system or something? It's terrifying. Oh, uh, extra banelings morphing into the front. We do have a sense tower out in the center. Extractors will be coming down. And our stalker's blinking off to the left side here as Hellions will be under some fire. So stalker's able to get a few shots off, and the Hellions continue to be chased away at the moment. So just being kept back. Stalker's got a few additional shots again, and just going to be having those Hellions all the way up through the center of the map. Now Vaudre is working through a couple of gates over on the left hand side, picking through those. Clearing those out, opening up some further spaces. Obviously, they've just been around since the early game. They're going to kind of... I mean, they were using it as a wall-off. Now they're going to just make their own wall-off over there. I mean, why give your opponent's vision, I suppose, right? It's essentially all those gates are doing, giving you a little bit of info. And with the depots, you can obviously then move out from that position as well, because you can just lower the depots when you want to get a move on. So that also works pretty decently as our stalk is still patrolling back and forth out the front. The Hellions going around the right-hand side will grab a Zergling kill as well. Just a little pick off there. And the Lings, uh, the Hellions, sorry, have been doing a very good job of just maintaining map control. Pretty much throughout this entire game, they've been very good at just moving around, looking for opportunities. They have dove into bases a couple times over and found some successes, so... Yeah, I gotta say, I've, I've liked the Hellion play from Ryung. And it's obviously easy to do that as well when you've had a lead like they have, but... Still nice to see, because I still feel like it's definitely been one of the ways to hold back Scarlet and Astraea's recovery in this game, as they especially keep Astraea just pinned back on a lower work account than he would have liked. And again, to me, that's a, a win condition that they're just fulfilling right now. extra carriers are coming up, so that's just Mara continuing to invest into this Sky Toss. I mean, I said that at the start of this series, you absolutely expect to see Sky Toss from the Protoss, Mech from the Terran. This is the combination that just makes a lot of sense. It's the combination that gets a lot of work done. And as the Void is going to show up on this left side, and well, yeah, do we have an answer to the Void Rays yet? Some Infestors spawn. We actually do land a Fungal. Can we keep these Void Rays here as they kill the Lair? Oh, we're just going to recall out, so... No, is the answer to that. <laughs> they recall out with plenty of time to spare. Now we're just going to see some disruptors trying to hold off at the front. I mean, you can see a way that the fight can work, I guess, maybe. I think the Sky Toss might be the one thing we don't have a good enough answer to, but I mean, at least with the disruptors, you can maybe deal with the mech army a bit to some extent. Now we're eating some Void Ray shots on those disruptors, and that ain't ideal. As Maru is going to drop some revelations to just keep in track of units over on that right hand side. Again, his carry account grows and grows at the moment. The Lings, Festers, Stalkers, and Disruptors all coming back around to the middle of the map here and just trying to figure out what exactly they would like to do next. Another revelation in the middle of the map. Would love to just keep track of units and. That's the thing, right? Map control has been brilliant all game long for Maru and Ryung. And look at the units lost. Holy crap. Maru's lost four units in the game, and only two of them show up on the units lost tab. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's really something. I mean, Ryung's only lost 13 as well. Uh, resources lost combined is something along the lines of what? Like 1,800 to 2,400. Uh, sorry, to 5,400. 5, 5, 5.6 maybe even. Wow, the, uh, the efficiency game here is uh, absolutely one side, which I suppose we kind of know. But on top of that, the efficiency, the, the, well, the mining, right, the available economy has been way higher for Ryung and Maru. Scarlet now hitting 104 drones, mass infestors in play, Estrella making his own carriers. But at this stage, you're seeing, well, ghosts on the way out from Ryung, and I'd love to see him just introduce a couple of Thors as well, especially as this... Uh, air army of uh, Astraea maybe becomes a bit more competitive. A few Thors should completely offset anything Astraea has to just being nullified in a fight against opposing Sky Toss plus Thors. The tanks are important because the tanks are going to be able to stay in range and maybe nuke down infestors if they try to neural parasite. So that is an important something to have. And of course, yeah, the ghosts are just 100% going to be amazing. Anything they hit on Astraea's side is going to be great, and if they can hit Vipers or Infestors, then even better. Take that spellcast and away from Scarlet. Take those opportunities off of her early. The earlier you shut that down, the better off you're going to end up being. 
because that is one of Scarlet and Astraea's main ways to win this fight with some incredible spell casting that goes their way. That is how they can absolutely still win this game when it's obviously so far been a game that really shouldn't be won in such ways. Well, big push as we do see the Link counterattack coming through. I like this as well because it's not giving Astraea time to properly get on his feet with the Sky Toss, so it makes a lot of sense to go now. Excuse me, just sneezing a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of like going now. Obviously, again, one of the weaknesses of Scarlet will be as well. She just has so many drones. Now, her standing army supply is also just not quite as great as you maybe expected to be either. Oh, sorry, guys. I got some sniffles after my, uh, my sneezes. Apologies as we uh, do have this push obviously continuing. Well, Rama's army is not having the best of times. Maru's staying pretty easily maxed out, it would seem, so far. A few more Tempest shots going off. These Infestors are going to get EMP'd. Oh my god. All of that energy just went down the drain. Suddenly this is a, a Maru versus a Straya fight because I don't think Scarlet actually has anything to really, you know, provide anymore. It looks like she just got a Parasitic Bomb off, so that's going to be one of the few Spellcasts she still had remaining. Another one comes in as that Viper goes chasing forward, trying to make the absolute most of the situation. Tempest coming through, Hellbat getting picked off, so will this Siege Tank. So again, actually a lot of clearing out being done as we are going to push this back. Astraea and Scarlet are going to very much so stay alive in this game. They are going to keep this one up and running for the moment. They have held the attack and I've got to say I am pretty impressed so far. That was actually kind of cool. Wow. Especially, I mean, especially after the EMBs went down. And maybe we can argue Maru and Ryung just playing safe. And I do think Ryung's army took a beating initially, so they may be waiting to get Ryung back online before they really continue to push in together. Oh, Maru and Ryung still in control of this game? Yeah, absolutely. And you can see Skull right now doesn't have the money. I wonder if she was feeding Astraea a bit as well, because she knows Astraea will get the better army. And so if she could give, you know, if she gives the money to Astraea, because it does feel like Astraea's not had the income to be served like this. I mean, now Scarlet's losing a lot of drones and she's just ending up on low economy as well, but I wonder if she helped Astraea out to some extent as well to kind of actually get here, because yeah, Astraea was really not set up well with how the early game went. Another couple fungals going down. Just going to see a t uh, Tempest picking off a Disruptor. Storm coming out, the Tempest coming through, a little revelation going down, not quite striking anything of importance as both players look to utilize those revelations to maintain map control and maintain information here. Again, it's just so controlling from Maru and Ryong, and they're just taking... All their bases, I mean, to be fair, so are Australia and Scarlet. All the bases on the map have been taken now, apart from maybe the most forward one is on the way up at the moment from Australia. The issue is, I think, is that Maru and Ryong are just so much further forward on the map, and jumping on top of these Tempests here is a big deal. Getting rid of a few of those before Scarlet was anywhere near helping out. <laughs> those Infestors just naturally clumping up as well, by the way, so... Very difficult to, uh really get those into play. The EMPs have been very good on them. The, you know, just general kind of spotting of them has been very good. They've never really allowed those Infestors to come into play too heavily since they've been pushing with the larger armies. Let's see what happens now as Scarlet and try and get forward with a couple of the Infestors there, maybe looking for Fungal Growth. Obviously, Neurals would be amazing if you can get up to Neurals as again just continued defensive players. Stray and Scarlet refusing to give up ground over here. We do get a big shot off picking off a Void Ray already. Nice fungal growth goes down on those Tempests. The Void Ray is continuing through. Oracle gets picked off as well. You don't see those few Infestors just burrowing up and backing away. Oh, a big EMP goes off. That Ghost got very far forward. Hits the center of the Infestors. Now there's a lot of Infestors, so there's still some energy left to be had. Big fungal growth lands, though. The Skytoss army of Maru is stuck. 
all caught up. Is there any further splash damage available? We drop the time warp before the mothership goes down. Neural parasites start to come in. Can we get rid of the infestors that are neuraling? There's no tanks really in range of those infestors. So Scarlet and Astraea are starting to turn this around. Maru is on the run. And it, well, Ryong is just stuck there as Ultra has come forward to take down the tank line. The few carriers that were neural get released and they are instantly eaten up by the Tempest. Scarlet and Astraea are somewhat pushing back the Maru and Ryong army in a very impressive display because this did not feel like a situation that was going to be good for them at all. And yet here we are. Still putting up a fight if nothing else. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't know if it's necessarily overall enough. Another siege tank gets neural. We try to target down the siege dub tank, doesn't quite work. Now I'm going to lose this forward base. Obviously, I think the problem is it's going to turn into Astray and Scarlet are just absolutely broke. They can't afford anything. And if that's the case, it's going to become kind of rough. There's a couple more EMPs going down. Tempest continuing to fight other Tempests here. Disruptor Shot will fly forward too. As our Ultras continue to push on in. Just trying to deal a little bit more damage. High Templar drops a storm onto the Tempest as well. Tempest taking a bit more damage here. Disruptors continue to fire and just our Tempest continuing through. Hitting the Ultras for now. So far so good as our Tempest continue back up on both sides. Our, I mean Scarlet's just struggling to max and I can understand why a drone can has been beaten down. Her bases especially have been in the middle and they've been the ones that have taken the most uh, damage here. And a lot of Australia's supply is Stalkers, so it's not exactly the army composition that's going to come out and win this game, is it? You know, these Stalkers are in an absolute world of trouble. GG is called a very impressive defense and drawing of the game out from Australia and Scarlet, but it's just not enough. Ryong and Maru a lead early and eventually breaking through. This one doesn't have, you know, you can see here already compared to the last map, this one does have the bases in the base, or the bases together, so already it's going to be harder to do something like we saw Astoria and Scarlet trying to do last time. And in the bottom left is Maru and Ruan. And in the top right is Scarlet and Astraea. Yeah, Scarlet and Astraea having a little bit of a tougher time, right? I, I do feel like they had a good bounce back last game. Like I say, they, the defense they eventually provided was very cool, very effective. They just started off badly. They didn't get off to a good start, and that was very true in game one as well. So two games so far where it's a very similar storyline for Australia and Scarlet, they just can't get off in a good position. If they start off well, I think they'd be able to do very well, right? If they could just get off to a decent start, the problem is really just getting off to a decent start. So that's something they need to try and fix. In the first game, they, they just caught up, got caught up in a very bad Phoenix fight, and that snowballed heavily. In number two, they tried to get cheesy, and that didn't get, you know, it wasn't received too well. That pro comes checking around. Nothing too out of the ordinary this game. You may see this. This is obviously looking a little funky, but this is just Ryung prepping to take the gold base because Terran structures can fly, so that's why he's building it over in Maru's base. Um, and then he's going to go second Rax. Maru just going to go Cybercore. It's just a fast expansion from uh, Skull and Astraea more than anything. So yeah, Astraea just expanding particularly quickly. Skull is expanding as a Zerg should. And obviously the Terran just getting ready to take the gold, which would be mighty fight. Now with the three racks coming up then from uh, Ryong, I wonder how aggressive they plan on being overall. Maru is going Twilight Council, so it definitely seems like they want to avoid the Phoenix this time and maybe just go for a full frontal push themselves. Something like a Blink Stalker three racks can be very powerful. Just a lot of, a lot of oomph at the right time, you know. You know, around six, seven minutes, you have that Blink Stalker kind of comboed with Bio. And if anyone's being particularly kind of greedy at that point on the other side, you can probably punish it. Oh, it's gonna go Dark Shrine Maru. 
Can I put the Dark Shrine down? Okay, that's kind of fun. Okay, so Mara puts down the DTs. I like that. Obviously, that's a good way to harass and get some uh, damage going early as well. Potentially keep on top of things here, so I definitely feel like that's a worthwhile way to go about things. I was just going to see a hatchery. Now a third hatchery coming down on the right side as well. Just getting that set up over here. And you can see Astraea's building the Phoenix, and that is the expectation, right? That, you know, one player builds into the Phoenix, and they continue to build Phoenix. We'll see if this game not having uh, Phoenix is going to be a real downside for Maru and Ryung, or if the DTs can truly offset not having the Phoenix, because again, Phoenix really are kings of 2v2. There's a reason we talk about them so much, there's a reason we get so hyped, there's a reason people just feed the Phoenix player all of the money to get as many Phoenix up as possible, so... Definitely a factor, as you will see the a few links sneaking in here, and some units will have to turn around and turn those away. Right now, they get rid of a couple of probes as they move up this ramp. They're going to walk up there and get turned around pretty much immediately by the wall off. Yeah, Blink on the way, Medivax and Stim on the way. So again, just heading into exactly what I kind of thought it was going to be initially. But obviously it's the DTs at first. Spoils on the way up on the natural. I don't think we have any other real proper detection, especially on the pro side. Okay, we're trying to boost now an Oracle, so... Oh, we have an Overseer as well, so the lab was dead. Wow, complete shutdown on the DTs. Then we get one drone, I believe, and... Yeah, both DTs die, so actually a pretty good defense from Australia and Scarlet. They were prepared. I forgot I saw that lab production from Scarlet, so the Overseer was extremely ready to go on time. And uh, that's what I was worried about, I guess, right? If there wasn't any sort of mobile detection, even an Oracle only has one revelation at a time or so. And then obviously you can get into some awkward situations. Obviously that doesn't really come around if you've got the Overseer that can move between bases and, you know, go to where the DTs are, go wherever you need it to be. Yeah, good defense. And for once, Australian Scarlet seem to be off to a little bit of a hot start in comparison to those previous games. And I would say even double down, not only do they defend the DTs well, but you also then have this Phoenix squad, which are... In theory, the best units you can have right now, and they're going to be trying to obviously make things happen over the next little while. So we'll be keeping our eyes on those. Now Marines there, pushing the Oracle back. And back down the bottom side, just going to see the Phoenix flying over to the left and readying up. As we do actually have Maru double expanding as well, by the way. Something which Scarlet and Australia will see. So Maru just going mega greed behind his opening Dark Templar. Just expand, expand. And just a lot of Stalkers. Not even going to tech up too much. He's going to go double forge. He'll have double upgrades for the Stalkers. But he's not even gone charge, right? It's just the blink at the moment from uh, Maru. So yeah, not looking to charge or anything. Just pure Stalkers for now. I just wonder how long you can justify going for that. He does end up cancelling the fourth base. I feel like that was an, an inevitability more than anything, honestly. Phoenix trying to get rid of a medivac, not quite able to just yet as the marines slinking back there. Going to start getting rid of some more marines. Medivac still taking some damage off Phoenix. One goes down. Stalker's blinking in to chase for another. Not quite going to get there. Temple Archive still building up on the side of Maru. So you have our infestation pit about a complete, our lings and our banes still coming in. The revelation goes down, I'm gonna track those stalkers a little bit, so it's gonna grab those, the extra few banelings on the way in right now. And Scarlet and Astraea ready to fire up into this base. I mean, let's see if Maru can defend, he's got stalkers, but they're not necessarily good against the lings. We've got a lot of Marines and Mines here, and that's the fair. Well, the Phoenix might not be as hot against either, but... Again, enough Phoenix can lift up pretty much anything and can pretty much nullify any sort of unit, so... In the end, Australia and Scarlet back it up. I don't really blame them. Australia does have, like, a ton of carriers on the way, so why fight now when your army is only going to be more powerful in the near future? And your opponents seem to be very stuck on more mid-game tech, and you're accelerating into late-game tech. Usually it would be on Maru and Ryung in this situation to be pushing and to try and make something happen. We can obviously see that that's maybe not going to be the case, but it's a nice to 
Yeah, but it generally isn't really down to a Skull and a Strid need to take fights here. The way they've set up means they are actually free to just play their game comfortably. I like the little drop of Lord as well. Going to try and keep some damage going so that they're not doing air, nothing at all. Quick response from Maru though. He's got the cannon here and a couple of Banes that drop off will not do very much of anything. The Stalker's blinking in. will deny that Overlord, I believe. And that is... Ooh, it just... Okay, it went down with the final shot on the minimap. Uh, this medevac getting picked at the same time, so that will fall. These Marines let's continue to chip their way into this Nexus, so a teeny tiny bit of additional damage being dealt. Gonna get rid of a base at least. I mean, it's very just, again, heavy mid-game units, and Mario's going Storm as well, which will help against the Ling Bane of Scarlet a lot. I just don't know if that's the big issue compared to the carriers. Do we have a response for those? Is pure Marine's talk just gonna be enough to overpower the carriers, perhaps? At this point in time, that might just be the goal we're heading towards of the first couple of mines. Do not hit too strongly. Oh, Bane's over here, also going to be dodged away. Honestly, the attention being paid on the minimap so far is very good, very convincing. As, uh, yeah, players aren't really, like, allowing, like, you know, Bane's just to roll in and wipe out a mineral line or anything, so it's, <laughs> I mean, some people maybe need to hear it, but it's very high-level gameplay. You know, for 2v2 especially, these guys are playing, paying absolute top-tier attention, not letting anything slip by them. They're just being the absolute best they can be is a little bit of Ling Bane slinks away to the side on the right there. We're gonna start dropping a storm. Some of these Bane's gonna get hit. Oh, there's an example of those storms coming in use and now you just morph in Archons. Like I say, those are the scenarios where I feel like storms can be decent, but what about later on? What about when you're up against those carriers? I would say Australia's work account is not quite as great as I thought it was, and I'm not, I guess he's only, oh, he's got four bases. I'm not really sure why. He really should be able to have a little bit more. And Ryong's army is actually just insane. 122 army supply. He is, he's rich, but it's all in marines, right? And if a couple of Banelings find the marine cluster, then they will just destroy us. Oof. Wouldn't mind actually friendly fires a little bit there. Here come the carriers, and this is the question of, are the marines enough to fight off the interceptors? Absolutely not when there's Ling Bane supporting those interceptors. And Mario is just nowhere to be seen. He's on the top of the map, pushing one of the bases of Estrella. So Ryong was left to fight very much so on his own. Still did decently, but he's going to lose another 10 supply or so for free. Estrella leads supply overall across the game. I mean, it's about 150 to 130 army supply favoring Estrella and Scarlet. Those are the numbers right now. Uh, it's actually, what, 145 to 140, I believe, maybe even? So it's actually now bouncing up. So Mario and Ryong getting some uh, extra numbers on the way. Scarlet's just not building anything. She has 75 drones. I wonder if she's just feeding Estrella's uh, Sky Toss production. I mean, she's getting a lot of upgrades, so I guess just a lot of preparations being made by Scarlet. And just not a lot of unit production right now, as she'll be spending her next bit of income on that unit production, I suppose. Yo, hey, Lanchan, thanks so much for the uh, 23 months resub on the Prime. Welcome back, as we're in the midst of this awesome 2v2 between Scarlet, Estrella, Maru, and Ryung. It's actually turned into a pretty excellent overall series, to be quite honest with y'all. And we're gonna get the Lings through picking off that cannon. We're gonna get the pylon, a couple of probes getting picked off, a simulator's going down. Our stalker's coming back up the top side, just clearing out a little bit of additional Ling Bane. I mean, losing bases here, Maru and Ryung, starting to fall deeper into trouble at the moment. Stalkers come out the left-hand side. Here come the carriers once again, pressing forward. Gonna get a cancel on that base. These are still just moving around. Gonna be seeing some additional Batteries and stuff coming online. Australia does have his own fourth up now on the bottom side. Oh, the recall into the gold of Ryung. Oh, that's a play as now the carriers will get active. And obviously you're right next to Maru's main base here as well. So you will see some of that production fall. If you can't push this back, immediately Stargates begin to drop. They come forward with EMP. As, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my PC is like, I don't like this. This is a little crazy. So if the FPS drops, guys, that's, uh, this is not having a good time, is it? Not in the slightest. Let me see if I can quickly pause a couple of things to try and help out with the FPS slightly. Let's 
try that. Uh, there's just a lot of interceptors all at once, I think, is the issue is combined with everything else going on. Killing off a Nexus, top left-hand side. Marin Ryong definitely again being hemmed in throughout this game, really being stopped from expanding to where they want to go and all of that. Scarlet and Astray have done very much so. They've done what Maru and Ryong did to them last time around, right? So they've definitely been able to kind of provide the alternative, you know, they've been able to kind of provide what they were provided last game. As these units continue to press around the upper left hand side, gonna start turning. Stalker start to back away immediately. The carriers and the interceptors are just gonna shred things apparently. These tempers are gonna have to run permanently because yeah, if these carriers get in range of these tempers, they are gonna melt. The upgrades are insane for Australia as well. Plus three on the air units compared to Maru who has well, I think plus one plus one. The armor is just not gonna go that far against plus three carriers. Carriers especially are just bonkers with upgrades as you've kind of seen so far. As we even have some fungals dropping onto the marines, and when the marines are kind of just a mass marine force, that's what Ryong is playing, then obviously it's kind of bad because then the fungals are going to just go extremely far, really deliver every single time, and like I say, that is just even more of a problem. All said and done. There isn't everything continuing to join together, just going to be seeing our CC out over on the left. And going, just going to recall this group of carriers here as well as just going to go once again have the mothership play from Estrella. And in we go, probably into a bit of a lag fest again, guys, as the interceptors will just rule this main base. And I mean, how many carriers are we on? 14 carriers. He's just going to recall them out. He sees the entire army moving forward. At the same time, Scarlet has annihilated the top left base once again and now is going to move into this base of Maru. And they just can't keep up. They just are never in position. They're being pulled around way too much. As in we go, our Ling's wrapping around the Nexus. These Marines are moving forward, but to do what? Run into more Interceptors? Yikes. Disruptors obviously doing a decent job. We've got some Infestors and Fungals available. I mean, it's a crazy broad fight, but the supplies are 100% in favor of Australia and Scarlet. And I just don't see any way that gets led up here in the next few moments. As uh, they back it up for a moment, but I mean, base after base going down from Mauro and Ryong, they are going to be on their last legs in the next few moments. If they're not already, it's probably this army pushing forward and just trying to trying to end it, basically. Another couple of fungal growths coming down, and well, we have the Tempest firing back there, grabbing a carrier. This Nexus again, Scarlet, keeping on top of that, not allowing this base to get online. This army looks terrifying. Every time we've seen it fighting, it just feels as though Mara and Ruong have no answer. A lot of that is just not having enough stuff. But a lot of it is just a variety of tech available to Scarlet and Mara and uh, Scarlet and Australia. And yeah, right now it is Mara and Ruong trying to make a push forward. We've got a couple of fours mixed in. I like that. The disruptor's gonna hit big on these Marines. Now the Ling Bane wants to try and get forward here. I don't think there's anything sieged up to stop the Ling Bane getting forward. Can the Infestors get in play for anything? I don't think there's many, and you know, EMPs available. We finally get some Neurals off as we try and drop some Neural Parasites. The numbers stay in favor of Team NA. And those Thors that are just hit by the... Uh, oh my god, the Thors! Fought by the Neurals and then hit by the Disruptors on the tail end. And yeah, this is just going to be, I think... Maybe not a fight to quite clean up the game, but it's definitely going to put you on that track. Fungal's well, helping a lot as we do see Medivax taking a beating as well. They're going to be fairly low HP coming out of these battles. Oh, he gets taken down. Our Marines trying to press forward. As again, I'm pretty sure that Meru and Ryung know that they kind of have to just commit right now. They're going to grab a couple of disruptors here. Another couple of disruptors going off and actually have a little bit of a chase down on Astraea's Tempest. Astraea's Tempest getting stormed in Archons. Not having the best of times, but here come around of Ultras and I just don't think there's any stopping this. GG is called from Maru. GG is called from Ryun. Astraea and Scarlet will take map three here in today's Alimo League. I was like, uh, uh, but yeah, I remember it now for sure. 
All right, in the top right-hand side is going to be the orange and red. <laughs> Terran and Protoss, and they are off and away, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are absolutely looking at proxy. It is going to be getting aggressive. Ryong and Maru. On the bottom side in the blues, Australia and Scarlet. Like I say, the proxy is going to come in this game from Maru and Ryong. So they're going to take their turn to try and cheese it up a little bit after the earlier cheese attempt from Australia and Scarlet was actually one that did kind of flop, right? It did fail a little bit, so. Here we go. Proxy's coming down. First barracks, pylon getting going there straight away. Yeah, all of that set up right here. Yes. All right. Rope. Up down a couple of gates. And SCV number two is waiting to build another barracks. So two gates, two racks. Where's the entrance to this base? So the entrance is over here. It's not super close. So uh, you know what I mean? Like it feels like it could have been closer even. I would say I guess you have to put it where the overlords aren't gonna scout it, and that means that up here is probably one of the more logical places, and then how do you get closer than that? Yeah, I guess that is kind of a pretty realistic place to put it, so... Yeah, that's uh, that's our setup as we do get all these structures online. We have a game number four, Fields of Death, Mara and Ryong again, leading 2-1. to one. This is a five-game series, so all five maps get played. We uh, play all five maps no matter what, but obviously, yeah, it feels good to, to see the series essentially go to 2-2 two and two before a fifth map as well. Just because I, I feel like our brains like that a bit more because we're so used to a best of five being an actual best dog, right? Rather than just five maps played, so. I'd like to see Australian Skull get the defense here and take this to fifth game. Being for, well, <laughs> whoever, you know, being to decide who takes home more money, basically. Here we go with the attack, guys. Reapers and Zealots is going to be the call. Uh, both of the, I mean, double expansion coming in at the moment from Skull definitely doesn't feel good. Australia expanding as well. The scout on this was non-existent, so this is going to be, I mean, just damage being done already. First adept on the way out. We're starting to go after the pylon, which is obviously powering the gateway. Does the zealots, do the zealots want to turn around here? We're going to try and get that pylon. He'll get it now, but this is honestly a little bit late because obviously the adept now got out. Although the adept goes down, the zealots are still in prime position. Oh my god, Australia is in so much trouble. Is Australia just dead? These probes are dying at a rate I don't think we can actually handle at all. Uh, batteries depowered as well, so yeah, I think actually Australia is just dead here in this game. We got a pylon back online. Obviously, Scarlet is somewhat alive, and she's going to get a few links slipping by. We unpower the uh, super battery, so yeah, Australia is just completely out of this game. And at this point, I mean, Scarlet's playing with slow links against Reaper Adept. This is looking almost hopeless. And it's going to be an extremely speedy game number four to give Ryong and Maru a 3-1 advantage in the five games that they play and cashing in on even more money because, again, it's money won per map won here in this uh, Lima League today. And I think the builds from Australia and Skull just weren't really designed to be kind of, you know, cheese-proof. Obviously, Skull took three bases super early. Australia was expanding. I mean, if you just don't know about it, then you just don't know about it, right? So choosing not to scout, being greedy like this, Getting heavily punished for it as Reapers and Zealots try to make their way through this uh, spine crawler and the Lings, and they get through it. And GG is called, and Maru and Ryong have another victory on their screens. Another one on the board for them. My cell phone is not working, man. Slightly embarrassing trying to, you know, try to, you know do my best air horn impression. But, uh. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, at least my voice doesn't break like the tech does. Top left hand side, our red Protoss player here from Onside Gaming is going to be Maru. And of course, his teammate Ryung here on Arctic Dream. It's another map where the players are separated. So this would have been another decent map to do the cheesies on, but apparently not going to be something our players dive in towards just yet. As on the bottom, it is going to be our purple Zerg Scarlet, and of course, the blue Terran or Teal Terran Astraea. I love that they're trying to keep the uh, colors similar in each game, like the teams, but that means that each player is a different color every time, I feel like. This 
Is this best of five? It's f it's just five games get played no matter what. So it's just five games played. Every map is worth money. You don't get more money for winning the best of five or anything. I just... There's no good way to write the best of five thing any differently in the bottom left. I mean, I can turn it off. But I feel like it's saying best of five is usually still better than just having nothing there, right? Because at least people can roughly know what to expect. And I feel like at this point in time, it's not a crazy assumption. If you see a best, see it say best of five and it says 3-1 to just assume I'm playing all maps as well, right? So... First who gets five wins? No, it's just it's just five maps. We just play five maps, and each map is worth money. So this is the last map of this series, no matter what. Yeah, a lot of people getting hyped for the TV2. Always awesome to see, guys. If you do enjoy the TV2, do you support the Alimo League and let them know. I believe you can, in my chat, type exclamation mark Alimo League and uh, find their Patreon page at patreon.com slash Olimoli. And uh, support the uh, Lima League. Lima League is fully funded by the Patreon. And uh, we wouldn't be here today without that support. So do check it out. And uh, you do get replays and stuff. And you also obviously get just access to... Well, getting to watch these awesome matches. I believe uh, we're going to have a big Lima League in December as well. Prize money from both months, November and December, will be combined. To really have like a very big, awesome uh, Lima League day. So that'd be cool. I'm going to go back to the Phoenix play from Maru. We took a couple games off of the Phoenix play for a couple different uh, build choices. And I'm going to go back to it now for this final map as I do have Stimpak on the way from Ryung. So just the Phoenix and 2-1-1, uh, one, one, right? So yeah, kind of just seeing them go back to what they won the first game with, with which was that Phoenix 2-1-1 one, one style. They obviously got very far ahead there and really just snowballed it very quickly. In return, Astraea and Scarlet are probably going to end up, uh... Well, I mean, they're playing a very different style, so they're probably going to end up doing better against this than last time. Because last time they played against this, it obviously, like I say, it fell apart very quickly for them. Uncharacteristically quickly, if I'm going to be honest. So yeah, Reaper goes down, trying to, try to scout, trying to spot just maybe how much gas there potentially is. Just try and figure out what maybe could be coming their way. Just trying to be safe against it. I guess the really fun thing about watching pros play 2vt. All these very kind of high level maneuvers and plays being made. In a format that doesn't usually see that kind of love and attention, you know. Phoenix coming around and helping to get some damage done. Opening up. For some kills here early. Getting two overlords in the game so far. And like I say, without the Phoenix coming in from Australia, he will not have Phoenix versus Phoenix, which is obviously definitely a statement in itself, because Phoenix versus Phoenix is just such a common occurrence in the matchup. Stalker's coming around. Phoenix are going to be just pulling back, staying out of trouble as much as possible. Now I'm going to turn it back around, try and chase down the Stalkers. Obviously, Stalkers have to be careful, because if they all get lifted and the Marines can just stim underneath them, then they will just die very quickly and they won't be very effective at all. So definitely something to watch out for there. Probe gets shot down by the few Stalkers, which escape away down the left-hand side. Phoenix still gathering up on the far left as well. Max is going down. A lot of setup being made at the moment. The Stalkers have tried to stay aggressive, but they really are just a moment away from having a very bad time. Here comes the mass lift. Marines will stim underneath. Now, the Marines have stimmed a couple times. They're low HP. But look at the Stalkers. They're able to kill. Getting quite a lot of value out of that. When you look at resources lost, it's... It's been expensive for Maru, but it's been expensive for Australia as well, more so. Absolutely. So, once again, the Maru Ryung combo are trading very efficiently, and that's something we've seen throughout this so far as our Corruptors come in. Just going to shoot a couple times at those Phoenix, push them back. 
Obviously with the Spire, you, you're not really ever going to see Mutas, right, when there's this amount of Phoenix coming in. Not without a lot of Corruptors first, but these Corruptors go too far forward and they're exposed to the Marines. The Marines are able to shred for just a little bit. A little shot or two going off, our Phoenix continue to hang around overhead and... Well, I mean, just great damage done again. Ryong and Maru find an insane value. Ryong has lost a single unit in this game. Single Reaper. He hasn't lost any of his Marines so far. And obviously they've been putting out a lot of damage here. So, yeah, looking very good. Uh, Storm is on the way from Astraea. Scarlet trying to get into Baneland speed. This map is protected by a lot of slow zones. And slow zones are definitely not something the Terran players typically want to find themselves pushing through with clumped up marines a lot of the time, but they are going to make their way up this one. Oh, the tanks have blocked themselves off. That first tank siege has forced the other tanks to go around the other way. Ryung's realizing it, so he's going to go lift his siege tanks into the medevac. Bring those forward, set those down again as well. Which we taking some shots. It's just going to end up cancelled here pretty quickly. These two tanks will in siege and press further forward. Our storm is about to finish up, continuing to come on through. Our marines are wanting to try and do the best they can right now as our phoenix pulling back as well. See, this position is getting more and more problematic for Australia and Scarlet because, well, Ryong and Maru are just not giving up this position at all, and I'm starting to get a lot of damage done with it. Now, there is the right side of the map that Australia has expanded up a lot, and Scarlet's starting to expand too as well, so that is worth taking note of as these Zealots will charge into these reinforcements to try to play the cutoff game. As, yeah, well, it just doesn't go very well. Plus one attack, there's no upgrades. As here we go, though, they have a fight in the Stalker. I mean, the Phoenix are busy against the Corruptors. Ryong is left to fight basically 1v2 on the low ground. And uh, the Phoenix will be left alive. We actually see Ryong getting out with quite a lot of the Marines as we go Overlord hunting. It's not going to be super effective in all honesty as we continue to kill the Corruptors. I mean, that's nice, but there's a lot of this which isn't exactly ideal as well. It's a very complicated few moments, that's for sure. Phoenix is going to come back around, get rid of a whole bunch more of these probes. So a lot more probes continue to drop off. And our carrier is in production once again from Maru as we come on by. Just clearing out as many of these probes as possible. Just gathering back together and just going to see our gold base. We'll be uh, in some trouble, so that one gets denied. Scarlet being kept on three bases, she's very much so being kept out of this game. With her bases on the left being denied initially, and now that gold base not allowed at all. She's very heavily being kept away from success here in game number five and definitely again a lot of the pressure on Australia to kind of keep this game going and keep this team together at the moment so stalker is gonna start pushing up as the marines continue by a few feedbacks go down some storms initially a lot of these stalkers begin to get lifted and into the sky they will fly. Our marines are going to come stimming through as well. Oh, big fungal though. Where did that come from? The infestor must be off down to the south. That's a crazy fungal. That actually helps a lot, no? Getting quite a few of those marines, getting some good damage done. A storm from up, ta up top as well. And now we're just, yeah, not with what he needs to really support this. So Ryung is going to end up having to back away. I think this prism's a little hopeful <laughs> chasing down that Terran army. <laughs> the Phoenix and Mary will clean it up. Yeah, I mean, Scarlet's getting to her spellcasters once more, and that's definitely a very important part of this game to get to. The spellcasters can make a world of difference, as we've already seen a few times in the past. Marines and tanks continue to push across. Uh, as obviously Ryong and Tamaru have established a lot of base for themselves. Once more, Scarlet and Estrella able to survive and get into their own base count rather reasonably here overall.
Phoenix and Carriers join up in the center and just gonna be seen again this Ling Bane and Festa Force falling back a little bit. All our carriers still standing strong as we come through. We get a couple of lifts, taking some units out of the equation. I believe an investor or two there, actually. Really good pickoffs to be had. And with the two team LA upgrades well in the way, Scarlet is still making corruptors to try and help fight off the Phoenix Wars, but also now the carriers that Mauro has. We already have Ghost from Ryong. I don't think so. He's getting has shockwaves, but I don't think there's many ghosts available already, but. It would obviously be a pretty big part of this is, oh, I don't know if I like this at all. Forstrayer and Scarlet getting attacked on into. The only thing I kind of liked was the fact that we did have the Archons maybe able to get rid of a lot of Interceptors. Great fungals on the Phoenix, though, so Maru will lose a lot of those. But what about these carriers? Can they actually be stopped? The Marines have been waiting for a long time before coming forward here. I believe all the splash damage is now being used. All the storms are gone. The bailings are gone. So these Marines can now just follow up. I mean, there's a few Archons, but they are not as scary as the aforementioned forms of splash damage. And he attempted to flank from Australia there. Not sure if that was super intentional. It didn't really work out at all. It didn't go well for him. As we're back on top of this gold base, of Scholar trying to deny it, fighting against a couple of these Archons. That are getting pushed back. That are getting slowed down. The gold base will fall now. And just going to be seeing more carriers and stargates on the way from Marius. He gets his rebuild going with plus three air weapons, finishing also powering further and further up in this game. Number five. And even going to be seeing Ryong starting to take the gold base for himself here as well. His army is honestly, it's low tech with just being marine tank, but it's honestly, it's doing the job, especially once the, you know, because he's staying out of the way until the storms and all the splash damage has been dropped. So the marines are staying very safe for a long time, and that's a big part of this. The mothership goes down, the carriers have work to do as the corruptors get on top of them. The carriers starting to work against a lot of the ground units initially, allowing Ryong to continue powering through after saying the Corruptors don't really matter. We'll just get rid of those at the end. GG's from Scholar. GG's from Australia. They had no real choice here but to leave this game. Maru and Ryong looked a little bit strong throughout the entire of this best of five. And uh, congratulations to them.